Welcome to the Gridiron Roundup with your host, Randy Silver. We break down the biggest sports stories from our favorite game, football. Today we have college football week three preview. Key storylines, games, and rankings. Let's dive into it all for you. Let's start with the college football rankings. The AP Top 25 is the media poll. The AFCA coaches poll is what it sounds like, the coaches poll. Number one AP poll is Georgia with 55 first place votes. Second is Michigan with two first place votes. Third is Florida State with three first place votes. And fourth is Texas with two first place votes. Rounding out the top six is USC and Ohio State. In the coaches poll, it's a blowout. Georgia's got 64 first place votes. Michigan has one first place vote. Then you have Florida State, Ohio State, and USC in your top five. Texas is six. So an AP poll, Texas is four. Coaches poll, Texas is six. We're still early in the season. This doesn't really matter as much. When people start playing conference games, you'll have records that won't be undefeated. So it's fine. As long as you stay undefeated, you'll be in the top four. You'll be in the playoff picture as needed. When you look through the rest of the pool, seven is Penn State. Eight is Washington for both. Notre Dame is nine in the AP poll. I know Notre Dame is 11th in the coaches poll. Some other differences here. Nothing is crazy. Oregon's 18 in the AP poll. While in the coaches poll, Colorado is 21st. We'll see for Colorado when they play USC in two weeks. That's the game that'll matter. And again, USC is number fifth. So that will be a tall telling game. They have to get their Colorado State today or this weekend to make uh, sure they can go to the game undefeated. USC is on a break. And then rounding out your top 25, Iowa and UCLA switched in either poll. So we'll keep showing you these every week. Let's go into some key storylines for you. Jade Norville, the coach of Colorado State, jabs at Deion Sanders ahead of the big game for Colorado, the in-state rivalry game. Deion Sanders says he won't have a hard time making Colorado's rivalry game this week personal after what Colorado State coach said. Rams coach Jay took a shot at Sanders' habit of wearing a hat and or sunglasses during news conferences, saying Wednesday during his weekly radio show, I don't care if they hear this in Boulder. I told them, ESPN, I took my hat off and I took my glasses off. I said... When I talk to grown-ups, I take my hat off, my glasses off. That's what my mother taught me. Sanders has his own swag, has his own style. He does what he wants. He's taking this personal. Did Colorado Boulder need any bulletin board material for this game? No, it's an inside rivalry game. Now they have it. So you know that this will come up in the conversations that we may see in video, but it will come up in Sanders to use. His team will be motivated. We'll see how this game goes. And, of course, we'll keep you updated, and we'll tell you when that game is. Another story to keep you updated on, Mel Tucker denies harassment claims, calls MSU, Michigan State hearing, ridiculously flawed. What's this about again? Mel Tucker was suspended by Michigan State. He is the head coach um, for claims that he sexually harassed Brenda Tracy, who is a sexual assault awareness speaker. In a statement Monday, he called the upcoming hearing a sham. Tucker said in the statement as well, through his attorney, he developed an intimate adult relationship with Tracy and that her claims that he harassed her are completely false. He said that in the upcoming hearing to assess whether he violated university policy is flawed and not designed to arrive at the truth. Michigan State Athletic Director Alan Haller suspended Tucker without pay Sunday night after details of the claims against the coach were made public in a story written by USA Today. Tracy, who operates a nonprofit company that ties to raise awareness about sexual misconduct, especially among college athletes, told university investigators that Tucker sent her gifts, asked if she would date him if he wasn't married, and masturbated while on the phone with her without her consent, according to details. Very uh, tough story. We need to report on this because this is major news. Head of a major institution. We will keep you updated how this is going, how the hearing goes, and so much more, but he will not be on the sidelines until this is resolved. If it is resolved, the damage may be done, where he, even if he's cleared, he may not be able to come back because of the damage to his reputation. NCA revealed violent threats in the wake of denying Tez Walker eligibility. Who's Tez Walker? He's a wide receiver from North Carolina. And we'll tell you what his situation is. But first, the NCA Division One board chair and vice president said in a statement Tuesday that the violent and possibly criminal threats have been directed at a committee members in the wake of a high-profile decision denying immediate eligibility for North Carolina receiver Tez Walker. So what's the situation? Walker, who previously was enrolled at NC Central and Kent State, believes he should be allowed to play this year for two reasons. One, he was able to play NC Central because the pandemic canceled the season, so never had any eligibility of game time there. And two, he transferred to Kent State, 
Walker also cites mental health reasons for his decision to transfer from Kent State to North Carolina to be closer to his Charlotte home and his grandmother, who he helped take care of growing up. The Division One board of directors believes NSA staff and the committee are applying transfer waiver guidelines as intended by member schools and giving proper and full consideration to individual cases, including consulting a panel of licensed mental health experts for cases in which mental health decided the reason for transfer. So we will see how this turns out. Uh, the Browns said the final verdict was announced last week. I don't know if I've ever been more disappointed in a person, Brown being the head coach in North Carolina, a group or of people or institution than I am with NCAA right now. It's clear that NCAA is about processes and couldn't care less about the young people supposed to be supporting. Plain and simple, the NCAA has failed Tez and his family, and I've lost faith in its ability to lead and govern our sport. Very tough words from a head coach. So that obviously probably reverberated around Tor Heel Nation. People not happy may have, or they did give violent threats to them, which never should be done. Violence is not the answer. Threats are not the answer. So we'll keep you updated how this situation turns out. Top 25 boards. So what are the games this week for you to be aware of? First game Thursday night, ACC Nation. Bethune-Cookman versus Miami, number 22 in the nation. Saturday, most of the games happen, of course. You have Florida State, Boston College, Penn State, Illinois in your 12 o'clock slot, 12 o'clock Eastern. LSU, Mississippi State, Kansas State, Missouri, Weber State, Utah, Central Michigan, Notre Dame, South Carolina, Georgia. Again, you can see a lot of these games. The ranked team are not playing ranked opponents yet. That will change as we move into conference games next week. On Alabama, excuse me, on ABC, Alabama at 3:30 against South Florida. Can they bounce back after losing to Texas last week? A potential future matchup in the Mountain West if Oregon State and Washington State join Oregon State, San Diego State, or potential new Pac-12 matchup if the Mountain West becomes the Pac-12. So be on the lookout for that one. Oregon State's 2-0 too. Oklahoma, Tulsa. In-state rivalry game right there. Minnesota, North Carolina. Northwestern, Duke. Can Duke get the 3-0? Western Michigan, Iowa. Western Kentucky, Ohio State. Washington, Michigan State. Good game here. Pac-12 versus the Big Ten. Michigan State obviously dealing with the issues with the head coach we just talked about, how they respond here. North Colorado, Washington State. North Carolina Central, UCLA. Tennessee, Florida. Big SEC matchup right here. Can Florida get the 2-1 or can Tennessee push the undefeated 3-0? Bowling Green, Michigan. Georgia Tech, Ole Miss. Big ACC matchup right there. Georgia Tech, Ole Miss. Wyoming, Texas. Hawaii, Oregon. And the final game, Colorado versus Colorado State. Can Boulder get the 3-0 to face undefeated USC next week? Or will they take their first loss of the season versus in-state rival Colorado State? You know you come back here. We'll give you the review over the weekend of how all the games go. That is your key college football storylines, games, and rankings for week three. Comment your thoughts. How's your team going to do? Should they be ranked and they're not? Is there a team ranked that shouldn't be? Are they too high, too low? Let's hear it. Enjoy college football starting tonight, Thursday. And of course, the slate of games that come on Saturday. Come back Sunday and we'll give you the recap storylines and more. And we'll do this every week for you. So go ahead and subscribe here. Grid Iron Roundup where we give you football highlights and football recaps. College football, American football. We also have MMA Roundup. We have European football roundup. We have hoops roundup. So we got all the sports for you. Get in here. Stay here often. We have videos coming out daily. Thank you for watching. Randy out.